his sexual preference was a well-guarded secret amongst Hollywood insiders. And according to former lover Scott Thorson, Liberace believed the world had no idea he was homosexual. Hollywood columnist Dick Maurice lives and works in Las Vegas. As a longtime friend of Liberace, he was always able to get a personal interview with the glitzy performer. Today, he reveals the truth about Liberace's life and death, as well as the scoop on a host of other Hollywood stars. I'm Bob Bruce, and this is Twin Cities Live. Good morning and welcome to Twin Cities Live. It's great to have Dick Maurice, our good friend, back with us again uh, to talk about uh, a big news story that yes. happened just recently, the death of Liberace. How long did he know that he had AIDS? Well, we had known that he had po tested positive for about a year. When I say we, I'm talking about the Las Vegas Sun, mm -hmm. which I'm entertainment editor of, and we broke the story. Uh, he had known that he had AIDS or that he had tested positive AIDS for a year, but he failed to do anything about it. He almost uh, willed himself to die. When, the, when your paper broke the story, a lot of controversy oh, about, yes. about whether or not to report that story. Yes, well, originally I was against uh, releasing that story. We had several meetings about it. We had all the evidence and all the facts, but I said, no, you know, people can control their personal life. Uh, one thing is to gossip about people's, you know, uh, personal life and, and the aspects of their career, but when it comes to someone's health, I think that's something they have no control over. So I was against reporting it. However, my publisher said, let's report it. Uh, we did get a yes, the lawyers threatened to sue. They kept trying to hide the, the Liberace cover-up that had existed for a lot of years. I mean, uh, the, the, it was nothing new that Liberace had lied about many things in his life. Mm -hmm. Why and the it only controversy, seemed natural though, his death should be one lie. Why the controversy after uh, Rock Hudson's death from AIDS? Uh, it seemed to be, uh, it seemed to his death, uh, there was some good that came out of it because it created tremendous awareness. In fact, Rock Hudson said that he wanted to do that that this was a serious problem within our country. Yeah, but why, you, why didn't yeah, Liberace... But you have to remember, Liberace spent all of his life lying about the fact that he was gay. Uh, he sued a columnist, Cassandra, in London years ago in the early 50s and won, and won $50,000, which he t took and donated the money to cancer. Uh, even in the Scott Thorson, the palimony suit, uh, uh, Liberace got on the stand and said, I am not homosexual, I've never had a homo homosexual experience. So it seemed that it would be awfully difficult at this point of his life to be able to do a 365-degree turnaround and say, yes, I have AIDS. Why did he deny it for so long in public? It had to be the worst-kept secret in Hollywood. I know it was the worst-kept secret, but it's very true. He did not actually believe the public thought he was gay. He really thought that the public saw him as a very kind man, uh, and very, which he was. He was a very nice man, also, but he was cheap, I'll tell you. To be honest with you, the man cheap. Was cheap. Now, how could you say cheap on well, the money he spent? One, one Christmas Eve, he invites members of the press and things to his home, and I was invited to his home on Christmas Eve. And because it's Liberace, you go out and you spend a few more bucks. I mean, you're not going to give him a, you know, something inexpensive. So I went and I bought him a gorgeous baccarat decanter. Liberace gave me two beach towels. Now another time, I went over to his house. And I brought a bottle of Don Perignon champagne, the good stuff. I paid, you know, extra money for this nice champagne. He put it in a silver bucket, put it on the mantle so everyone could see it on display, and served Andre's pink champagne. <laughs> the cover-up uh, surrounding his death. Yes. Uh, quite extensive. Oh, yes. Yeah, now, did he manager mind that ahead of time? I don't think or so. Who, who was behind all that? I think his manager, Seymour Heller, was behind all of it. Although, you know, I, that's only my personal opinion, Seymour, so don't sue me. Uh, it's my personal opinion that Seymour was probably behind it, behind the cover-up. Now, I went to the funeral in Las Vegas. Needless to say, I was not the most popular person there when I arrived. As a matter of fact, Seymour greeted me with anger and started to say, your paper, your paper's responsible. Well, our paper's not responsible for Liberace dying of AIDS. What about the medical examiner? Why did he not fall into the, the little group of the people that were protecting the, the cause of death? You're talking about the coroner? Yeah, the, I, well, the coroner. I, yeah, I, the think, I think the reason why was because there had been so much publicity about it. In California, contagious disease must be reported. Uh, we had all of the evidence. I understand that the coroner spoke with my publisher, and it was on that basis that he decided to, to do the autopsy and to, to do the medical uh, reports that proved, of course, that we were accurate. But you believe that this should have been kept private, or...? No, 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 I believe at that point it, ha the, it had to be made public. I mean, that's law. I mean, the fact of the matter is it's a, it's a law, and you have to abide by the law, regardless of whether you're Liberace or anyone. How many relationships uh, w was Liberace involved in? We heard about Scott Thorson. I mean, was it 
many different people? And were there other people perhaps within show business that he might have been involved in? Well, because I, we've heard the rumors that obviously it's going to come out regardless about Rock, Hot, Rock Hudson and, uh, and Liberace, and you're going to hear a lot of you know, wild claims. Okay, well, yes, and that, that one definitely is a wild claim. Uh, Rock Hudson and Liberace did not have an affair. Uh, I broke the, one of the portions of that story because Scott Thorson said they did have dinner. However, I talked to Liberace's sister, Angie, and sh she made it perfectly clear that Liberace and Rock Hudson never had an affair, that during that period when supposedly this relationship happened in the 50s, Liberace was fighting Confidential Magazine and she, quote, a few rag sheets, and they were very protective, and that she, quote, practically slept in a twin bed in the same room all during those years. So if Rock Hudson had an affair with Liberace, he was sneaking in the night and carrying on and leaving. Uh, did Liberace leave any money towards AIDS research? This is the sad part. And I think this is the part that I will not forgive him for, is the fact that he did not leave any of his millions to help AIDS research. Once again, he was frightened. If he left money for AIDS research, people would automatically assume he had AIDS. Instead, he gave it to musicians and for scholarships, which I think is wonderful. However, uh, Liberace himself worked in the B&G sandwich shop as a dishwasher to pay for his tuition. He did okay for himself, and I feel the money would have been better spent going to AIDS research. You, would, you said you attended the funeral. Who was there? Well, at the funeral in Las Vegas, uh, Debbie Reynolds was there wearing black, and I walked up to Debbie and I said, you look lovely in back, black, and she said, I bought it for Eddie. You know, she was married to Eddie Fisher. Eddie. And <laughs> she has never forgiven Eddie. And she said, she, uh, also, Rich Little was there. I said to Rich, you're looking thin. He said, ah, don't report that, don't report that, because fat is in now in, in Hollywood. If you're thin and start to get thin, they, the rumors already start. Robert Goulet uh, delivered the eulogy, and he called me the night before and asked me if I would help write it. And he said, I need a line that would distance myself because I don't want people to think that I was that close to Lee because I wasn't. So I wrote a line, and the line was, uh, you know, Lee and I didn't hang out much together. Uh, Lee didn't play golf with me, and I didn't decorate houses. Uh, and so that distanced himself from Liberace. Other stars that were there uh, included some of his protégés, inclu including Scott Thorson. He showed up. Uh, the boy, of course, that was settled his palimony suit with Liberace for $95,000 about three weeks before his death. Uh, no big stars, though. And where was, I was, just where say, was Michael Jackson, who yeah, used who to hang around there? with Liberace? Michael Jackson hung around with Liberace in London, and the very first time I met Michael Jackson was at the Hilton Hotel when I went downstairs to visit with Liberace in the dressing room. Michael was standing behind the counter, behind the bar, wearing one of those little, you know, those little wake, waiter jackets I call them that he wears. And I thought he worked for the Hilton Hotel, and I was ordering him around, telling him to get some peanuts for Lee and make a few drinks and everything else. And he ran out of the dressing room, and Liberace said to me later, don't you know who you just shoot away? I said, who is that? He said, Michael Jackson. <laughs> who else was not there? Was, was there any one personality that was noticeably absent? Because well, they didn't want to be associated well, with... Well, look at Bob Hope. He sent his wife, Dolores Hope. I mean, come on, you might as well send the maid, you know. I mean, give, <laughs> give me a break, you know. Uh, where was Bob? Out on the golf course two blocks away? Um, Kurt Douglas. I have to give respect. He showed up. Now, one would not expect macho Kurt Douglas to show up at Liberace's funeral. He did. I said, and I think that's a lot, a lot of respect for Kurt Douglas. Because all of these other stars, Tom Jones, Engelbert Humperdinck, all these stars that when they had TV shows and needed to get their ratings up would ask Liberace to come on. And then when it was Liberace's last moment, none of them, all of them stayed away. And that's not right. How did his sister handle all this? She was there Well, Angie the end. took it very hard. She's very bitter. She's, th she's threatening lawsuits. Uh, she claims that she's going to prove, and I have the conversation, she claims she's going to prove that Liberace did not have AIDS. This is what I've got to see. Uh, and that she's going to fight it. Now, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you have to admire the woman for standing behind her brother. Uh, the lady is in her 70s, and she's, she's standing behind her brother uh, even after death, and you have to respect her for standing up for him and for fighting for him. And that is a, is, a, is a remarkable quality that I respect very much. People will now start asking the question again and again, who's next? Who are we going to be surprised by? I mean, we're surprised, uh, I think, many of us by Rock Hudson. Liberace maybe not as surprised as, as because I think, as we said, it was the worst kept secret in Hollywood that he was There playing. is a Hollywood actor, which I have been told is suffering from AIDS. You have seen him in a lot of movies. He is good looking. He has gotten a lot thinner. Uh, and he is suffering from AIDS, and he will be the next victim, I'm told. Who is it? I can't. I wouldn't say. Is he, is, are there going to be many more? I, I don't know. It seems I mean, to be coming to grips with this, at least, because Dionne Warwick recently, uh, at the Grammys, received a, a lot of uh, awards and everything for the song that, that she what, did. That's what Friends of To four. raise money. Yes. I, well, I think Hollywood is coming to grips, and thanks to one lady, Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor made Hollywood finally sit up and take notice. She kicked them in the butts if they didn't go to Rock Hudson's funeral. 
and you have to give the woman respect because the woman came out a champion for, th for this cause. Elizabeth Taylor is the lady who all of the credit goes to for, for rallying the people around the AIDS cause. How much would the cause of Liberace's death tarnish what he accomplished uh, in I don't life? Think, I don't think at all. How can, you, how can you tarnish someone who was known as the world's greatest showman and always will be? Uh, I don't think anyone can match. Uh, let's face it, he was the granddaddy of long before Boy George and Michael Jackson and sequence, it was Liberace who did it. And what difference does it make how he died? You know, Rod McEwen once said, it's not, it's not who you love or how you love, but that you love that counts. He was really the, the forerunner of all the rock stars. Sure. The wild Elton costumes. John, where would Elton John be without, who, by True. the way, tested for AIDS and tested negative. Uh, Elton has admitted he's bisexual, and he went through some uh, throat surgery recently in Australia, and they were concerned that it was AIDS. And he tested, but he tested negative. Is Burt Reynolds the one that you were speaking of before, the gentleman that is getting thin and, you know, I, I've heard that, that he has AIDS. A lot of rumors about Okay, yeah. now let, let me... Uh, <laughs> let, let a lot me of rumors on. on. I uh, heard those rumors, and I first confronted several of his friends who denied it, and then I confronted Burt himself. Uh, we were standing together uh, talking one night, and I turned and I said, do you have AIDS? Uh, just to get a reaction from him. And I can assure you it is not Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, what happened to Burt Reynolds was he was hit by a stuntman in a scene and it dislocated his jaw, which caused pressure on the eardrum, which caused pressure to the brain, caused dizziness, caused nauseous. He was unable to eat. It has nothing to do with AIDS. He does not have AIDS. He does not have AIDS. And, and as he said to me, you know, you haven't made it in Hollywood unless they, today, uh, the two things. One, you're gay, and two, that you have AIDS. And he said, once they say those things about you, you know you've made it. And they said those things about has there, <laughs> has there been any discussion as far as where Liberace got AIDS? Was it from his lover, Scott Thorson? Or, and has Scott no. Thorson tested for AIDS? No, Scott told me he tested for AIDS and, and that uh, he has tested negative. Of course, as you know, it takes five years, five years to nine years, for it to show up, uh, the incubation period. So he could very well have it. Uh, but he says he has tested negative for it. Uh, no, I, I would assume that, uh, I mean, Liberace always had some pretty people around him, surrounded. One of the young people that he took to a disco, a 30-year-old good-looking chap, did die of AIDS. They were seen together in New York City at Shirley MacLaine's birthday party. And where the heck was Shirley MacLaine for, for Liberace's funeral? Obviously, you know, she was off meeting with some Swangwali somewhere or something. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Where does all this homosexuality uh, attitude go? I mean, it, it seems unnatural, and it leads to death. Well, I, I mean, I think that a lot of homosexual people are very creative people, uh, and that's why a lot of uh, some of the famous people, like Michelangelo, happen to be homosexual. I don't think AIDS is not a gay disease. I mean, you see children dying of it. You see, uh, and you're going to see a lot of, a lot of, quote, normal straight people dying of it. A gay has nothing to do with it. It just happens to be that uh, those few individuals that have died that have been made headlines happen to be homosexual or bisexual. I mean, Liberace had experiences with women. Uh, his first time uh, was with a woman. Uh, he told me about it. It's in his book. Uh, he, he had had experiences with women, so he w you cannot say he was totally gay. He may have preferred gay relationships, but he was bisexual. Well, when we come back, I want to talk about, you mentioned Liz Taylor. She's yes. got a new little fling going, evidently, according to... With George some, Hamilton. Yeah, some of the yeah. magazines, at least yeah. they say. I don't know if it's true, but you, yeah. I'm sure you can tell me whether yes, or not it's I'll true. And we'll whether. talk about that, and you can call in and talk to Dick about any celebrity you want when we continue on Twin Cities Live. When you were growing up, do you remember what you wanted to be? How close did you come? When you dreamed about the man you would marry, did you, di in fact, marry him? Well, all of us have expectations of how our lives are going to turn out down the road. And then we say to ourselves, is this it? As we grow up, we are forced to give up our fantasies. It seems that life turns out to be a series of losses. Author Judith Forst calls these necessary losses. She says that without letting go, we can never begin to grow. It is a hard lesson in life, and she will be in our studios this Thursday morning. Come down and share your experiences of losing, leaving, and letting go. And together with our studio audience, we will prove that for every negative in life, a positive usually comes as a result. The number to call is 641-1298 for free tickets to meet Judith Vorst and find out how to welcome change and loss to appreciate what we have.
I had been pronounced uh, dead a couple of times in my life and came through, uh, that I had this, uh, that I would live to a ripe old age. And, but I would have many close calls. And I did, as and you, you did say, have one in 1963, you know, I did have a very, I was told I was going to die by nine very famous medical uh, scientists. And given the last rites. And given the last rites, yeah. And you went what was he referring to there? It was, it was uh, he remembers the day very vividly, it was the day that John F. Kennedy was uh, assassinated. The doctors came in and told him he was going to die. What happened was he was cleaning costumes uh, and he was using cleaning fluid and he kept all the windows down and it obviously had effect on his uh, respiratory system and caused his kidneys to collapse and he was put on dialysis and he did survive uh, remarkably well and he believed in that you know he believed in reincarnation he believed that he would come back in, a, in the next life he believed in, that he'd been, been reincarnated before from Chopin and from Liszt so we have a, uh, a lady here who now you actually met Liberace oh definitely in fact I met him twice I won a contest of, uh, they wanted to talk about Liberace. And I won the contest, and it was a dinner date. When was this? Uh, beg your pardon? Well, when, when was it? It was 1956. Now, don't ask me how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I went down there. It was a 620 club at that time, remember. It was a real nice club. I walked in. He greeted me. He was very friendly, very considerate very nice he asked a lot about me instead of talking about himself yes and then he says that's it from one italian to another italian he made a lot a lot of people happy he had a great respect and love for his fans one time while uh, having dinner with him a man, fan, a man came over and started slapping him on the back <laughs> and the man kept saying to uh, hey lay you know wave over there to mona and, and lee would wave and this and every time he would go to pick the fork up the man would take his hand and push it away and he kept doing this, and I decided to tell the man off because I felt that he had abused Liberace enough. And as I started to, I got a swift kick underneath the table. And later Liberace told me that when it comes to his fans, they never abuse him, he said. I never look at it that way. They made me successful, and I love them, and I will not ever have anyone talk against them. And he did have remarkable respect for his fans. Thank you for holding on the line. Go right ahead. You're talking with Dick Maurice. You're on Twin Cities Live. Hi, Bruce. Good morning. I am a Twin Cities being myself. I'm a gay homosexual, and I just feel that it's really poor that people have to go in after this poor gentleman has dead and attack him the way he does, saying that he has had sexual encounters and so forth. It's just foolishness. I wish they'd just let the poor man die and live in peace. You think it was unfair for them to report that he died of AIDS? Well, well, that for one fact, and also the fact that he should just be able to rest in peace without having to be dug up the way he has been. That's just my own personal feeling on the subject. But isn't that one of the risks, Dick, of being a, a celebrity? I mean, I'm when a you're a celebrity, yes. it's part of what you accept. Yeah, exactly. Along I'm with a, all the money and fame. I'm afraid that's a part of it. We saw it with Elvis Presley. We saw it with uh, Grace Kelly. Anytime a celebrity dies, it becomes big selling news. Uh, matter of fact, the, the biggest selling National Enquirer was the time that Elvis Presley was on the cover in the coffin and the biggest selling people magazine when grace kelly was on the cover so i'm afraid people are interested in it and uh the media has a job to do and uh, report it i agree that the man should be allowed to to die in peace however he is a national figure he is an, he's world famous and that's the price one has to pay for that fame what kind of precautions are the people in hollywood um, taking. I've heard that they're really afraid, you know, to do kissing scenes and uh, all that. Yes, as a matter of fact, the Screen Actors Guild tried to, which is the union that governs actors and actresses, tried to pass a law whereby there could be no kissing scenes. Well, of course, you know, where would so daytime soap operas be without kissing? There wouldn't, there wouldn't be any soap operas. Uh, but safety precautions are being taken. I mean, we're not going to see any of those hot, passionate French love making anymore. We're going to see little, you know, little quick kisses. And, and I understand that Lavoris and Listerine are big sellers on the sets of soap operas. <laughs> have, have any actresses uh, refused in their contracts or anything about this? Well, I, a couple of actresses have on the nighttime soaps gotten a little upset over some of the kissing scenes. There is a uh, gay gentleman on Dallas, uh, one of the actors, and it's pretty well common known within the cast that he's gay. And who is they, it? they refuse to, uh, to, if he wants to reveal it, that's his job. But this one always, well, who is it? Who is it? You know, if they want to come out well, Everybody's going to ask that when you, know. you say there's a... But you know. just look at the gentleman, look at the, look at the cast of Dallas, figure out which one isn't married, 
and uh, you'll come up with your own conclusions. Okay. Go. Dak Rambo, right? Uh, I'm not. I see. Thank you for filling in the blank. Go ahead. I'd like to say something about Liberace, the performer. Yes. Um, his music was just wonderful, and there's no disputing that. But, I hear a butt coming. But why did he have to dress like that just to get people to come? They would have come just to listen to his music. Why did he have to dress in what I thought a very tacky way to get people to watch his performances? Well, See, in our, before you answer that, because in reading the research and everything, our generation, because you're about the same age that I am, we missed, <laughs> so, except you're much younger, <laughs> we missed a lot of the early Liberace when he did not dress in the big flowing minks and that sort of thing when he was on television I mean he dressed normal yeah but you have to remember think that there's a lot of fine pianists that have never had the success of Liberace and the reason why Liberace had the success was because of the costumes that only draw uh, would draw a larger audience because one they came to see here and play but they also came to see the costumes and what happened it became a very expensive joke as he used to laugh about it he was going to play uh the hollywood bowl and it was at that decision that somebody said they're not going to see you in the back if you wear just plain ordinary black tails so he decided to wear white tails and then from that it started to get well you've got to do something more outlandish and then when he started to play las vegas and became the highest paid entertainer in vegas uh, he decided at that point to start to wear a gold lame jacket and that was even before Elvis Presley and it was Presley who learned from Liberace to put on a gold lame jacket to sell more records. Good morning, you're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Uh, Dick? Yes. Uh, I have a question for you about Cher because you said to ask about other people. Yes. And I just heard that Cher had her nose done and she has such a distinctive look i was wondering if this is true and, and what she looks like now well Cher has had a lot of things done uh over the years uh let's put it this way she said so like many, what let me tell well, us no, what no, let, wait, she said so many nips and tucks that every time she crosses her leg her mouth opens uh no she, yes Cher has had a has, has had a nose job but she also had her breasts fixed and uh, Raquel Welch, you know, had some ribs removed to make a thinner waist. And that, that comes, that's the part of the price one has to pay. People want to look at glamorous people, and we all aren't born with that kind of beauty, and sometimes a plastic surgeon can help. Look at Joan Rivers, God knows. Uh, I, I knew you'd bring her name up sooner or later. Well, go ahead. I have two questions. Uh, for one, was Scott Thorson in Liberace's will? Uh, Scott Thorson told me, although the will has not been read in detail yet, that he thought that Liberace was going to put him in the will. I would think it's very doubtful. He also claimed they had a meeting with Liberace and they made up at the end and he gave him a big pan to bear and, and they saw each other. I would think, I mean, Liberace was, a, Liberace was a kind man who at the point when he was dying, I'm sure felt no ill will towards anyone. However, what Scott Thorson needed was a good kick in the you-know-what. And my other question uh, was, you know, you said it takes five years for AIDS to test positive. Yeah, five to He nine, was to find, find out later if he had AIDS and he had a, let's say, a, a relationship with a woman and they had a child. Could that child contract AIDS from that? I'm not a medical doctor, but I would yeah, think the possibilities could happen. Uh, right now, as you know, uh, uh, Rock Hudson's friend is suing Rock Hudson's estate, claiming that, you know, he although he has tested negative, he's worried about the possibilities of having AIDS, and so he has a lawsuit going against the Hudson estate. And we'll be back with more uh, celebrity news from Dick Maurice right after this. <laughs> if you looked at the uh, survival statistics of the treatment of cancer patients about 50 years ago, it was not very good at all. They would live maybe several years, and that would be about it. But today, it is one out of two. We are now curing half of all cancer patients, and six out of ten Americans diagnosed with cancer today can expect to live a normal lifespan, but there are still questions. What are the basic warning signs of cancer? Is cancer really ever cured? And more importantly, what are your choices when choosing treatment for cancer? On Wednesday's Twin Cities Live, we'll look at the five major types of cancer treatment and hear about the latest treatments that are just beginning to come out and are just being experimented with. Join our studio audience Wednesday and meet people who have beaten cancer and the medical director from one of the area's leading cancer treatment facilities. The number to call is 641-1298 and get the most up-to-date advice on your realistic choices for cancer treatment. You have to have some setbacks and some disappointments. I think it makes you uh, 
a better person, a better artist, a better performer. What's the biggest disappointment in your life? Is it the fact that you never had time to have children? I think that's probably one of the things. I love kids, and I'd love to have had some of my own. But I, I have no regrets, really. He did love children, and he loved dogs. He had 27 of them. One of the dogs, Baby Boy, was blind. And when you'd go to have dinner at his house, you didn't get to sit next to Liberace. Baby Boy did. And he would hand feed the dog. I never saw anyone who had such compassion and love for animals as Liberace did. And that was one of his last requests, that his dogs be taken, taken care, care of. of. For... Absolutely. His dogs meant the world. He would go on tour. You know, he'd be over in Europe or something. His telephone bills would run thousands of dollars. And the reason why is he would call home every day. And they would put the phone on the speaker box, and the dogs would go crazy as he would talk to each one of the dogs. And they'd be jumping around the kitchen, carrying on crazy, talking to Lee. Just last night, I mean, we seem to be losing a lot of our great entertainers but of, they don't of go a with generation. But they don't yeah, go with an another one last night, yes. uh, Danny Kay. Yes, Danny Kay died of hepatitis, one of the... Uh, he, Danny Kay died, yes. It's sad. Uh, a, a wonderful uh, man who gave a lot, another entertainer who, who gave a lot to the, the public. One time I saw him, interesting, Danny Kay, uh, he, he was frightened of the public. Uh, one time we were next to each other in cars and I waved to him and he waved and this man came running over when he saw it was Danny Kaye and he knocked on the window and Danny Kaye practically had a heart attack and he looked at the man and then as the man walked away Danny Kaye reached over and put the, pushed the button down on, his, on the car. I think you become so fearful uh, of death threats. Liberace had them uh, once in Australia. Uh, they, he got a note backstage saying he was going to be killed that night and they were going to cancel the performance. And Lee said, look, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. I'm going on. And they had more security guards posted all around the stage. You get death threats. Liberace also got a note from a woman in Milwaukee who claimed that every time he winked, she was becoming pregnant. And she wished to, uh, and, she, and I saw the letter, and she said, I wish you'd stop winking because all these kids, we, all I do is watch soap operas and eat bonbons all day. We wait for you to come home, but you never come. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, is there any truth to the fact that Meredith Baxter Burney is leaving family ties because yes. of a conflict between yes. Michael J. Fox and herself? Yes, she feels that her character is being pushed down, and, and Michael J. Fox seems to get all the credit, and she is going to leave, yes. What will they do then? I mean, They'll recast it. You know, many times a star leaves the show, and they'll just recast the role. I would imagine, though, maybe Mother will have a cancer surgery or some oh, tragedy will so come into the life. Kill her off. They'll probably kill her off, and then he'll find a new love interest. <laughs> well, no, that, well, that's how it's done in, in Hollywood, as we know. And, you know, uh, and then they'll find a new character to come in and play that role. Speaking about cancer, I know you're going to be doing a show on it. Gilda Radner, by the way, uh, is dying of cancer and is in, is in terrible, terrible uh, health problems right now. And it's very sad, so send cards to Gilda Radner. Joan Collins' is a divorce trial seems to be very much... Better than Dynasty. Alexis-ish. <laughs> is it a oh. ratings ploy somewhat? No. It feels like she's playing her character in real life. No, no. I'm afraid this is one time when real life is portraying uh, her. Uh, and, you know, he's outside the courtroom yelling, Joan Collins, I love you, I love you, don't be Alexis. I mean, the man is, the man, you know, the, the, let's put it this way, the man is a freeloader. I mean, he really did. He got, he saw a gravy train here. Uh, if you look at his past, he hasn't exactly been successful. I mean, he's had a few things, but here was a chance to hang on his hat to someone rich and ride in on her coattails. And now he wants half of all the money she made. They signed a premarital agreement. He gets 20%. That's the way it should be. He should live up to his agreement and to heck with all trying to, you know, drag her through the mud like he's doing it right now. It's not fair. It's not fair to Joan Collins. 20% is probably a pretty sizable chunk of change. Absolutely. They made 13 to million together. I would like to hear about Bobby Vinton. Anything. 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 He, he, in Las Vegas, he held my hand and sang Blue Velvet. Oh, did he held your hand, did he? I am in love with Bobby Vinton. <laughs> I, I, Unfortunately, I don't think you're alone in that because I, he probably has done that more than once. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe you were probably the only time he did that. No, no, no. Bobby Vinton, sitting backstage in his dressing room, was telling me how he'd like to form a vigilante gang and go out and kill drug pushers. He said that he really had it in his heart, that he, he's tired of seeing young people hooked on drugs, and if he could get away with it, he would like to form a vigilante group and literally go, da go drive down the streets and mow down drug pushers and pimps. That's, that's the Polish prince. <laughs> yes. Yes. Who's had a bad eye tuck? I, I think his eye job is terrible. A bad eye tuck? Yeah, what about Tom, Liz? He what? and Tom Jones both had bad eye jobs. What about Liz and George? 
Liz and George are good, good friends. They have been for a lot of years. Don't look at them. Don't count on them walking, walking down the aisle. No. I think it would be a mistake for both. I just don't think that George Hamilton uh, would really be happy tied down to one woman, as proven with his marriage. And God knows we all know that Liz has a rough time uh, <laughs> being tied down to one man. So I don't think the combination would work. I think they're a wonderful couple together. They look great together. I mean, George is always tanned and healthy, and Liz looks fantastic. Doesn't Elizabeth Taylor look great? Remember all those jokes about how she was a big fat pig and how... <laughs> well, I mean, it's true. But Joan, she was. Well, Joan Rivers used she to... She was. But she was still a legend. Oh, yeah, no doubt about yes. it, but I mean... She... And, 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 uh, but she was hardly a big fat pig. And, and hardly did... And Joan, and Joan Rivers used to say <laughs> that we used to take her to McDonald's and we'd try to push her through the arches and Edgar would hold the Twinkie saying, Come on, Liz, come on, Liz, you can make it. <laughs> The person you were talking about earlier about being gay, could it be Richard Chamberlain? <laughs> no. Well, hey, I've well, heard that rumor before. He, he's not on uh, Dallas, but Richard no, said... No, earlier. Okay, Richard said that he is a confirmed bachelor. He's in his 50s. Yeah, but you know, you don't hear... You don't see many stories with him with other women, do you? No. Well, I think his private life is his private life. I don't think Richard has ever been a public personality, runs out to restaurants and everything else. But, you know, what's so strange is why don't we... No one calls up and says, you know, or no one asks, so-and-so heterosexual? Is Rob Lowe heterosexual? Is, but you know what I mean? It's always the emphasis on the gay thing in the, in the Hollywood community. Uh, and it's always been that way. Even though Hollywood, the community, within the business, haven't they been very, uh, very harsh sometimes on people? They always try to hide it. Do you think it's opened yeah, up? But what about the women or? who are prostitutes or the women who give themselves freely on casting couches? I mean, they're just as bad in many ways. Well, we've got to take I mean, a break. When we come back, we'll give you a chance to... Okay. Talk about your favorite person in the world, Joan Rivers. Oh, my favorite. Because I lady. know you really are close with We're her. We're going to get to talk about the albino princess. The, yes, in just a moment. We continue on Twin Cities Live. <laughs> Dick, I've got a couple of names. Uh, a couple of names I just want to throw out and give me a quick synopsis of what's happening in their life. Okay. Joan Rivers. Oh, Joan Rivers. Well, Joan and I are both involved in a lawsuit. She's suing me for $5 million, uh, for calling her an SOB on the Tomorrow Show. And mind you, all the things she says about people. That one's been thrown out of court twice. However, Joan keeps appealing it because as she said to me, or her husband said to me, Edgar, outside of the courtroom one day after deposition, she said, we have more money than you do. We know you don't have $5 million, but we're going to drive you to the ground financially. We're going to bury you. So that's what Joan's planning on doing. Now, I wrote a book, an unauthorized biography of Joan Rivers called Can We Really Talk? And now uh, Harp and Rowe was going to publish it. They backed out of the deal. And now I am suing Joan Rivers because she was responsible for that book not getting published. So I'm involved in a lawsuit. But have you been watching Joan's show? She looks really good. I mean, considering the fact that she's in her mid-50s, she looks like Boy George with a Mary Kay starter cosmetic kit. <laughs> no, no, really. She wears so much pancakes, she could open her own Denny's. Let's move on here yeah. <laughs> to uh, Michael Jackson and the much talked about album yes. coming out. That, yes. You know, I mean, he did Thriller about 25 years ago. No, it no, seems no. Like. You, you... Well, it seems like a long time. I and think... the little feud in the family. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, Janet Jackson and Michael have just gotten back together again. They have set, they've kissed and made up. Uh, he and Janet may even do a tour together and may record an album together. Thanks to her winning you know, winning some awards and getting the response that she's gotten, I'm sure had a lot to do with it. He felt that her image was too sexy. You know, Michael's a Jehovah Witness. He is also a strict vegetarian. He has some strong political, uh, strong political uh, as well as personal beliefs, and he's very conservative. And yet he may appear on stage to be very, you know, uh, wild and far out. He's anything but that. And so he resented the fact that Janet was out there stealing a lot of his choreography, but also the fact that she was sort of, he felt, exploiting herself sexually. So that feud has ended. Now, Michael will be coming out with a new album with a whole new look. You know, he had plastic surgery. I swear to God, he's trying to look more like Diana Ross He had every plastic day. surgery again? Yes, on his nose. His whole new nose. He looks, I mean, he looks different. And his eye, eyebrows are so, you know, electrolysis and everything. He, with the little curls and everything. He does look Diana Ross. I'm beginning to wonder because I never see the two of them together. I'm beginning to think it's really Diana Ross trying to make another buck. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Let me move you on now. I want to move you on quickly. I want to get Civil Shepherd. Civil Shepherd. Uh, hey, she's going to have twins. Yeah, I just got married She got today. married. Well, she got married? She got ma finally yeah. got married? Yeah, they got married. Oh, I'm glad. I'm so glad that now, Daddy, the kids won't be bastards. Uh, 
but it, it, she just got married, uh, which is nice to hear. But she is going to have twins. Sybil Shepherd is going to have twins. I have two questions. Yes. Um, do you think Liberace really wanted to dress that way, or was he manipulated by other people? No, I can honestly tell you Liberace wanted to dress that way. One night he asked me to come to see this act that he was auditioning and asked my opinion. So I decided to, to go with him for dinner. And I went over to his house and I was waiting for him and I was sitting at the bar waiting for him. And he walked out and he was wearing an outfit that I thought this was a joke, that he was going to say, ha, 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 and turn around and go get changed. But this was actually the outfit he was going to wear on the street. He looked like a barbershop pole, a lot of stripes and a lot of jewelry. No, that's the way he really dressed. He was Polish. No, I don't mean to... No, don't. Be very... Uh, he very was, careful very what careful. you say here. He was Polish and half Italian. So it was an interesting combination that made for interesting fashion. <laughs> Good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Yeah, I want the scoop on Leonard Nimoy and his, his separation from his wife. Yeah. They were long considered to have one of the most stable marriages in Hollywood. Who is the other woman? <laughs> Come right out and say what you think, would you please? <laughs> uh, the other woman is a woman that I understand an actress that he met. Uh, no, no, she's not famous and the name wouldn't mean anything. But uh, yes, they had one of the most stable marriages in Hollywood. But you know, one of the things about Hollywood is that variety is the spice of life. And I'm afraid as we know, many marriages, you know, the sexual part of it gets a little tiring. And Leonard Nimoy has had a resurgence thanks to the movies again. And he's hot again and that makes you very ripe on the, uh, the vine to be picked. And all of a sudden, you see a lot of husbands or wives who have become successful, who are once again in the spotlight, and they have a lot of young boyfriends, they have young girlfriends, and that's the case with Leonard Nimoy. He just happened to become hot again, and that makes you ripe. What about Bruce Willis? Bruce Willis, he just, you know, he broke his collarbone skiing. Uh, boy, that, that show, they really go at it, you know. Between, the, between her now having twins and his broken collarbone, I'd like to see the next few weeks should be interesting to watch the next few episodes. They really go at each other. Bruce, of course, is coming on strong. Uh, he has a receding hairline, which drives him crazy. And if you happen to mention to him, you better run fast or duck. Is he, he pretty difficult to be around? He is difficult to be around. If you were, for example, if we were all here today and they were taping a scene, he would want the whole room cleared because he wouldn't want to do the scene in front of you. He's very insecure in many ways. Back to Liberace, I'd like to know where he was born and raised. He was born in... Uh, Milwaukee. West Allis, Wisconsin. Was it Wisconsin? Okay. I uh, picked that up last night. I just okay. happened to, you know, West Allis, Wisconsin is where he... Uh, well, that's right outside of his, Milwaukee, I believe. And his birth certificate was in the back of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Oprah Winfrey? Uh, interesting. Now, be, be careful now, I know, because I know. she uh, is on before our show okay, here. Okay, that'll be nice. Oprah's part of our family. No, I like Oprah. I think, I, I think that uh, she's doing a rip-off of uh, the Phil Donahue show, who's doing a rip-off of Les Crane and, and Joan Rivers. Believe it or not, Joan Rivers used to do an afternoon talk show in New York, which was a la in the audience, and with a microphone and everything, long before Phil Donahue so ever where, came So where does that put me? That's what I want to know. Yes. See. Where does, uh, go ahead. So, <laughs> so Oprah is very fortunate. She's at the right place at the right time. And uh, I think um, it's going to happen for her, although I think it's going to be a short-lived career. It's going to burn out. We'll be right back with more with Dick Maurice right after this. Come on right back. Most of us were raised in the traditional home. Dad worked in the business world and Mom worked at home. But today, all that has changed. More than half of today's moms are out in the workforce. What are the rules for two career couples? What role models do they have to show them how it can all work? On well, next Wednesday on Twin Cities Live, we will explore this increasing lifestyle for the American family. If you are a working couple and have learned how to make it work, we want to hear from you. Or if you're a woman whose marriage broke up as a result of your career, we also would like to hear from you also. The two career couple is in a transition period where the old rules may still creep in. The man may crave the housewife services their mothers gave to their fathers, while women may feel conflicted that their husbands don't take care of them financially. We need answers to these new circumstances, so if you are a two-career couple, please give us a call at 641-1298. Real quickly, a lot of uh, publicity surrounding Pam Daubert yes. and her new... And Mark, they're going to tie yeah, the knot. Mark Harmon. Yeah. Well, uh, People Magazine voted him the sexiest man in America. Do you think he's the sexiest man in America? No, I see a lot of head shaking no here. I, I don't see where they're 
coming from? I mean, he has a nice face, but I don't see him as the sexiest man in America. Has Priscilla Presley had her baby yet? I understand she did. It was a little boy. Mm. Yes. Yes, can you... Uh, Elvis would have been proud, I think, the way she's conducted her life, to be honest with you. What role did Liberace's two brothers play in his life? Well, little Rudy, who died at a very early age, was his favorite. Uh, George, of course, as you know, played the violin and led the orchestra for a lot of years uh, and was very close to Liberace. He died of leukemia a few years ago. It's funny, it's interesting how it was three years apart. First it was Liberace's mother, then brother George three years, and then Lee three years later. They're all over three years apart, uh, their deaths. Uh, but they were a very close family. The Liberace stayed very close over the years. You know, Liberace's father walked out when they, he was very young, and Lee and his brother George uh, worked in B&G sandwich shops and had to even go on welfare. And Liberace paid every bit of the welfare back with interest when he was able to. That says a lot for some. It says a lot for Liberace. Good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Hello, Bob and Dick. Hi. Good morning. morning. Yeah, good morning. So I was wondering, who are your favorite upcoming stars, and do they have a chance to become big headliner stars? Are you talking about, like, entertainers? Or? Yes, uh, film entertainers. Film entertainers? Yes. Well, I think no one's going to be hotter than Tom Cruise. I think he's got a long career ahead of him. I think he's going to be coming on strong. Emilia Estevez. Uh, all of this, what they call the brat pack, that all sort of hang out together, all seem to show that they've got more than just acting ability. They're writing their own scripts, some of them getting involved in directing. They've got their feet on the ground, and they're pushing ahead with their career. But I think Tom Cruise and Emilia Estevez are coming on really strong, and they'll be hot stars to watch in the future. What's Farrah Fawcett doing now? Uh, Farrah Fawcett and Ryan O'Neill are causing havoc on a new film that they're working on. Uh, they, Farrah picked up the telephone the other day and had the director fired after he asked Ryan to leave the set. Uh, Ryan left the set, but uh, I understand some words were exchanged, and uh, Farrah is uh, doing a new television movie. She's working on it right at this very moment. Yes, I would like to know if Joan Rivers and Johnny Carson are still feuding. They certainly are. Uh, you can bet on that. Yes, yes. Uh, they are not talking at the moment. Let's face it, you know, the way she handled that was all wrong. She, I mean, if someone helps you the way Carson did, and Stock Severance has said to me, had, he, had she come out and been really nice about it and said, look, Johnny, I've got this opportunity. It's a chance of a lifetime. Do you mind if I do it? Carson would not only have given his blessing, but according to Doc Severinsen, Carson would have been on her first show. When she had her first talk show in New York, it was in the afternoon show, Carson threatened to leave NBC to go on her CBS TV show. He said, I want to go and help her out. I want to do this show. And NBC said, look, Johnny. He said, look, I'll tear up my contract. I'm going to help a friend out. That's the kind of man Johnny Carson is. Joan Rivers forgets who her friends are who helped her. What's the hottest piece of, piece of information you've come up with in the last month about celebrities? What's something that's really surprised you? Oh, there's so much. It, it constantly happens all the time. Uh, I mean, of course, the Rock Hudson Liberace relationship was hot. Uh, it's, it's difficult to say what's hot. I mean, it depends on how you see what's hot and what's not. What do you think's going to be? What do you think the I mean, next... I Magazine making Tom Jones the, the sexiest man in America puzzled me. I couldn't figure that one out. I mean, those, those polls were stacked. Let me tell Making you. Tom Jones? Making Tom Jones, yes. Yeah, squeeze the Charmin's Jones. <laughs> What about you, I'll we, tell you in between the commercial what that's all We about. just saw Patrick Duffy just the other night from yes. Dallas on Barbara Walters special yes. talking about his parents and that was his correct. religion and everything. Well, it's I know he's, he's a Buddha who chants. And he's a Buddhist who's heavy into that. And you know, yowie, yowie, yowie. I think that's fine. I mean, everyone has their religious preferences. However, I don't want to sit with my legs crossed going yowie, 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 you know, hoping that something's going to happen from that. But if it works for Pat, Patrick Duffy, if it works for anybody, then you're right to... That's what America's all about. We'll be right back. If we get a chance, I'll ask you about Sly Stone and Rambo 3. Oh, yes. Believe it or not, we are going to have to go through another Rambo picture. We'll be right back after this. As you know, we've been talking about the first week of April, I'm going to be hosting a uh, cruise down the Mexican Riviera on the MV Star Dancer. And we have uh, been drawing and giving away free cruises to our viewers who have sent in cards, and the cards are in here. If I draw your name, we're going to draw a card. You must call us within 10 minutes at 642-4698. That's 642-4698. So I'll reach in here very, very deep, all the way down to the bottom. We'll get one from the very bottom. And Brenda Duncanson of Newport, Minnesota, uh, if you call us within 10 minutes at 642-4698, 642-4698, Brenda Duncanson. 
401 4th Avenue, Newport, Minnesota. Call us within 10 minutes, and you'll be joining me on that cruise in April. Won't that be a lot of fun, to be sure. We may even meet some celebrities Are on that cruise. Are you going on the cruise, too? Of course I'm going ah. on the cruise. <laughs> Go right. <laughs> yeah. Barbara Streisand, personally and professionally. Yes, Barbara Streisand. She's hot right now. Yes, thank goodness. And it's about time. You know, the Oscars certainly gave Barbara the Streisand the shaft with Yentl. However, the Grammy Awards, the music industry, respect her musical talents, which you cannot deny, and she won a Grammy. And I, congratulations to Barbara. Barbara, you know, is a perfectionist. She is difficult to work with. She'll admit she's a bitch. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the Hollywood community has sometimes put their nose up in the air to Barbara. And God knows Barbara's got a bigger nose to stick up in the air than they do. You just amaze me. I don't know how you get these people to do interviews after you talk like that. No, well, Barbara admits it. Now, Barbara was one of the people that they said, let's have plastic surgery, Barbara. But Barbara realized that she had that a nose job that it could affect her singing. That's why she didn't do it. Um, what's going on with Chris Everett right now? Nothing very much. It's kept, kept, been keep kind of quiet. I understand she's uh, signed for some new commercials. We're going to be seeing her. God knows what she's going to be advertising. It but always, she and her husband are on the out. Yeah, well, yes. But so that's, they're not... that's kind of old news by now. Hey, she was paid him a huge amount in alimony, too. She paid him a lot of money? Yeah. It was a buyout, I guess. <laughs> How about Bette Midler? She seems so crude to me, and I can't hardly stand to watch her. But what she's re what she really like? I'm open to learn about her. Bette, <laughs> Bette is crude, but in a wonderful way. I first met Bette Midler through Barry Manilow years ago in New York City when she was just starting out. And you liked her then. She's saucy, she's brassy, and she's a lot of fun. But Bette Midler's had a, a tragedy in her childhood. I mean, her, her brother was born brain dead. Uh, Bette Midler's father used to scream at him to help him to learn, which he did. Today he's able to be independent. Bette has a sister, and Bette had a real rough childhood, which you find out with many of the stars that's the case. And she's certainly risen above it. She's very hot now. She's a new picture deal with Walt Disney. And, uh, I mean, Bette Midler and Walt Disney are not two that you would normally think of together. No, I, I think you do. You know, Walt Disney wanted to immortalize Liberace. He had cast his hands and his head and was going to make a computerized Im image of Liberace. But Walt Disney died, in the, and then the, Liber and the Walt Disney people killed the idea. Yes. Hotel accommodations and dining provided by the Radisson University Hotel. 615 Washington Avenue Southeast on the University of Minnesota East Bank campus. Henderson Chauffeur Cadillacs provide limousine transportation for the guest of Twin Cities Live. Henderson's offers the largest selection of color, style, and service in the five-state area. Bob Bruce's wardrobe is provided by Justers. Hair and makeup provided by Take 5, 504 North 1st Avenue in the Butler Building. Go ahead. We've heard about everyone else famous and popular. What about you and what's going on with your life? Well, I'm working on a new television show, which will be national and cable, which will be a tell-all show interviewing stars, and a new national radio show, in which you'll be able to call into Las Vegas late at night and talk with the stars. And I hope you all join me in Las Vegas. What about Linda Evans and, and Rock Hudson? Is she still really disturbed about what happened there? Well, I, the kiss wasn't a, a big French kiss, so I don't think Linda's lying at home at night worried about it, no. No. My thanks to Dick Maurice. We'll see you again tomorrow on Twin Cities Live. Thanks for being here, Dick. Thank